Hi, today we'll be focusing on a series of forward bending poses for beginners. So we're breaking down the technique of the poses, um, looking at the sort of shared principles of the group of poses um, of forward bending, so a lot of stretching the back of the hamstrings, engaging the abdomen, lengthening through the spine. And um, we'll be doing that in a kind of interactive hands-on practice. Hi, I'm Irene, a yoga and mindfulness teacher. I'm excited today to be covering with you a series of forward bends and really breaking down the fundamentals of the poses. If you're excited as well, do feel free to give the video a thumbs up. It would be helpful if you have time to first warm up the body a little more with some sun salutations. If you're not sure how to do sun salutations or you want to be guided, check out my other video on sun salutations. Otherwise, um, if you don't have time, you can still do this practice, but just go a little bit easy, particularly on the hamstrings. So I want to make sure that um, both at the end of class and uh, the next day that you feel um, nicely stretched and not overstretched, of course. So we'll be beginning with a standing forward bend Uttanasana. So that's uh, literally translated as um, standing forward fold. And for this pose, you want to have the feet about hip distance apart. So probably would make most sense if you're facing towards the front of the mat, uh, just, you know, doing with the space you have around you. You can start to bring the hands towards your hips, lengthening on the inhale through the spine, and on the exhale, starting to fold uh, forward from the hips. So you can see this first part of the forward fold is really coming from the hip flexor um, flexibility. So that will be sort of the first um, part of the pose is about lengthening as much as you can through the legs and through the spine and folding uh, from the front of the hips here. When you're kind of getting to this position where you feel a stretch on the hamstrings or you feel there isn't that much place more to go, that's when you can start to bend the knees. And as you bend the knees, depending on how much you need to bend the knees, it gives you more space to fold a little deeper and the belly can rest on the thighs. Now, if you are a uh, sort of quite new to yoga or you have tight hamstrings, you might just be here with quite a deep, uh, bend in the knees. You could hold then the opposite elbows and relax the, the head down. Over time, um, especially when the body's a little warmer, you might just practice then straightening slowly one leg a little and bending the other leg a little deeper. So you're gradually getting a little deeper into that stretch. You really want to get the feedback here, particularly from, from the hamstrings. So um, it's not just about feeling, <laughs> of course, good in the pose um, right now, but also tomorrow you don't want to be feeling a tenderness in the, in the hamstrings. Once you're then in this position, again, the knees can be as bent as you need here. You want to really try to activate through the um, at both the thighs and through the, the hamstrings. So you can do this by pressing through into your feet, really starting to activate through the legs. And if you can press the hips a little up, and then that might just give you the space to lean a little more forward into your toes as you relax the head and the neck. And again, you can be sort of playing a little bit with bending one knee and straightening the leg a few times. Or you can be just rocking, if you like, a little from side to side. Slowly then coming back to the middle, if you were rocking, bend the knees a little deeper, release the arms and roll from here all the way up to standing again. Now, one of the key things I like um, to recommend when practicing yoga in general is to try each pose a few times. And that way you can allow the body to kind of open up into the pose. And it also means that when you're sort of approaching the pose, you don't feel like, okay, I have to give it everything um, in one go, but you can really allow um, the body to kind of 
you know, um, warm up a little into the pose. So we'll do this um, pose a couple more times. <laughs> so hands uh, can come again to the hips. Once more, you're lengthening through the spine, lengthening through the legs. Elbows might draw a little back as you first start to fold uh, just halfway forward. So you're engaging the belly, engaging the legs. And then once you either can't fold anymore or you're getting quite a lot of tenderness in the legs, bend the knees again a little and start to fold slowly forward. Arms can come down again, might hold the opposite elbows, relax the head. And we'll start once more with straightening a little more one leg, bending the other leg deeper and just alternating again a couple of times. And one of the key things in yoga is it's not just stretching. <laughs> There's also a lot of kind of lengthening, activating, engaging going on. So you want to not just kind of hang in the pose, but try to also find that active engagement. And that will also help you um, stretch in a safe way. So now we'll just allow ourselves to hang a little. So either you're keeping that little bend in the knees or you might work a little on lengthening the legs. Again, relaxing the head and the neck. And seeing if you can breathe steadily in and out through your nose. Staying here, one more breath. And then releasing the elbows, slightly bending the knees. And on the inhale, slowly, slowly rolling all the way back up and just shaking the legs a little. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to come one more time into the pose. So hopefully the approach to the pose also starts to get familiar now. So you can bring again the hands to the hips, lengthening up through the spine, engaging once more through your belly, leaning a little into the toes as you fold halfway forward. Okay, when you can't fold any deeper, you can start to bend the knees a little, relaxing the head, dropping the arms down, maybe catching again the elbows. And once more, working on straightening one leg a little deeper as you bend the opposite leg. Seeing now if you can tune a little bit more into your breath as you're getting more familiar now with the pose. And then allowing either the legs to stay both a little bent or lengthening a little more and starting to rock a little from side to side. Something that happens quite a lot here is people tend to hold a lot of tension in the head and neck. So see if you can really allow your head to hang completely. And relaxing also the muscles in your face. And then slowly coming back to the middle, releasing the elbows and rolling from here all the way back up towards a standing position. Great. So the next pose I'm going to um, take you through is the downward dog. It's a kind of forward bend in disguise. So we'll approach it from the front of the mat. You can use the next inhale to reach the arms up and over the head gazing up. Exhale, slowly folding forward. So we transition through our forward bend. You can bend the knees as much as you need and really place the hands down in the, in the ground here. Stepping the feet one by one back. So you're having a nice wide stance with your mat. And then you can allow your heels to lift nice and high. And if you need here, slightly bend the knees again. So this is a tip with all the forward bends that's you can generously bend the knees as much as you need to protect the hamstrings. Activate through your arms, allow the hips to reach up and back. Again, the head can be just dropping down. And then we'll start again to bend one leg, allowing the other heel to drop a little down and then changing size as you move with your breath here. So we're just pedaling the legs, the legs that is Working towards being straight might not feel comfortable to straighten completely. That's absolutely fine. But seeing if you can kind of transition that one leg is more deeply bent and the other one is more working towards being straight here. Again, doing this without uh, causing yourself tension, especially in the hamstrings. From here, starting to lift both heels up. If you can, 
Allow the legs to lengthen if you need, slightly bend the knees. And then exhale, we start to slowly drop both heels towards the mat. Inhale, lift up again through both heels. And exhale, dropping the heels back down again. And whilst you're doing all of this focus with the legs, you want to be keeping the spine nice and long, belly firm, and head relaxed. Pausing a moment now in your full downward dog. Again, absolutely fine if the knees are a little bent. And then exhale, dropping the knees down. And we'll just rest the arms a moment by coming to a child's pose. Softening the face, relaxing around your shoulders. Focusing on your breath. And then we'll come back again into that downward dog. So I promised you three times in each pose. Um, okay, tuck again the toes under. So we'll come into the pose um, from a different way now. It might, for some of you, feel a little easier to transition this way. So fingers are spreading, palms are grounding. We're drawing already the weight back towards your hips. Now on the inhale, keep the belly firm as you slowly start to lift up through your hips. Again, legs can be as bent as you need here. Heels are lifted and then you might start to bend both knees and we start to transition between straightening one leg and bending the opposite leg here. So we are trying with the arms to activate them, of course, but also just allow most of the weight to draw back into the leg. So that's why I like to call this pose a forward bend. It's almost like the arms are sort of just in front of us for support and most of the work wants to be happening in the legs rather than the arms. From here, we'll do a couple of times, dropping both heels down and both heels up. And again, if it only feels comfortable to drop the heels a little, absolutely fine. So just respect what your body is telling you to do. Don't feel it's necessary to do more than uh, what feels comfortable. Pausing then in the, in the downward dog of your choice. Breathing in and out through your nose. And then exhale slowly again, drop the knees down. So big toes can be together, knees apart, and just come to rest down again in the child's pose. So often as we're beginning the downward dog, it can be quite um, common that there's a lot of weight in the, the arms. That's how it feels super heavy in the arms. And that can also do with a little bit the flexibility of the legs. So as you start to get more comfortable in your forward bending, you'll probably notice that the downward dog feels a little more easy and comfortable as um, the weight transitions more towards the legs. So doing this one more time. So inhale, coming up onto the hands and knees tucking the toes under, drawing the hips back, and then lifting the hips all the way up and drawing them still more back on your next exhale. We can start with both knees bent, both heels lifted. Start to pedal slowly back and forth. So again, hopefully now we're moving into the third uh, repetition. This starts to feel more comfortable for you. You can be doing this movement as fast or slow as you like. And then lifting both heels up on your inhale, exhaling, dropping them back. And just doing this a couple of times, both heels at the same time. And then pausing in your full downward dog again. Really grounding strongly with the balls of the feet, drawing front of the thighs towards the back of the legs. And then on the exhale, you just slowly drop the knees down and once more come to rest in a child's pose.
Okay, slowly walking the hands back up. We're going to come back to standing, so just finding your way back to a standing position. We're going to do one more standing pose, and this is going to be variation of Prasari to Padasanasana. So it's a nice wide pose. You can be the length of your mat. And again, we'll be doing this three times, and we'll be first um, sort of flowing in and out with the breath before pausing in the pose. So rule of thumb, feet want to be roughly as wide as where your wrists would be if you opened the arms out to the side. And toes can be sort of uh, with the feet slightly parallel or slightly in, depending on what feels good for your knee. Now we're going to bend first into that right knee so you can sort of lean into that right leg, lengthen through the left leg, hands can be in front of the heart, and then straighten the leg. Exhale, bend into the left leg, and inhale, straightening. And just doing this a couple of times. Might feel nice actually to have, as you're leaning into one side, the toes slightly more spinned out so that um, your knee can sort of follow the same line as your toes. That feels comfy for me. And you might each time just be working on sinking a little down. And you can see, in addition to um, flexible hamstrings, the forward bends, it's really nice to have also activation and strength um, in your quadriceps at the front of the thigh. So that's also what we're working on here. So you might just start to slowly lower a little more down. So we get a little bit more into the hips, fingertips is maybe more dropping down here. Great, still moving with the tempo of your breath. And then we'll come slowly back up. And again, if the toes had spun out, you can spin them a little more in now. So we're gonna be folding forward um, with the legs relatively straight, hands come towards the hips like we did in our um, uh, Uttanasana pose with the feet parallel. We'll do the same here. So you can start to first fold halfway forward. So you're finding that forward fold from the front of the hips. If you need here, slightly bend the knees. Again, just ease the tension, but those comfortable legs can be relatively long here. And we start to drop the fingertips down to the ground. And again, if you're wondering, how can I get my fingertips to reach the ground? Bending the knees will always allow you to get that extra space. So you're lengthening through the legs. You're leaning, if you can, a little forward into the toes and reaching the crown of the head forward here. And then option on the exhale to slightly fold a little deeper. So you bend slowly at the elbows, drop the head down. And on the inhale, open the chest again, halfway up. So we'll do this a couple of times. Exhale, slowly, slowly folding from the hips a little more. Inhale to lengthen. Last time, exhale, folding. Maybe this time walking hands a little more in line with the feet and dropping the weight of the head down. Again, if you're getting a lot of tension, Work on either straightening a little one leg and bending the other one a little, or just bring that little bend into both knees. Use the next inhale to open again the chest halfway up. Bring the hands back to the hips. Now use that next inhale to come up and exhale to release. So as I promised, we're gonna <laughs> do this two more times. So again, toes can spin a little more out as we start to Sort of bend a little bit more into one knee and straighten the opposite leg. Great. Just alternating from side to side. And you might start to sink again the hips a little lower if the body allows. Maybe also lifting the toe up of that straight leg if that's comfortable. But if you want to stay up here or that's what feels appropriate for your hips, of course, absolutely fine. So slowly coming back to the middle again, toes were spinned out, spin the toes in, bring the hands to the hips, lengthen on your inhale. Exhale, start to fold halfway forward, placing hands under the shoulders. 
allowing spine to be long, allowing legs to be long, unless of course you need that micro bend in the knee. Exhale to fold a little deeper from the hips and inhale to open again through the chest. Exhale once more, fold, dropping head down and inhale, lengthening back up. Exhale, folding forward this time, pausing in the pose, walking maybe hands more in line with the feet as you start to fold here. If legs start to shake a little, bend the knees a little more. And then inhale, open the chest halfway up, bring the hands back to the hips and come all the way back up to standing again. Doing this one last time, so toes can spin out. We'll start to bend into one side. Inhale through the center. Exhale to the opposite side. And again, now as we are probably feeling quite warm now, you could choose to play a little bit with sinking the hips a little lower. <laughs> Click. <laughs> Great. So just alternating a few times side to side. You can use the hands as much as you want and then come back to that center again, hands coming to the hips, lengthen through the spine. See if you can just fold halfway forward again, pausing here. Fingertips come under the shoulders, bend the knee slightly if you need to touch the ground. Exhale to fold forward from the hips and inhale, lengthen through the chest. Exhaling to fold and inhale, lengthen through the chest. Exhale one last time, starting to fold forward again. Option to walk the hands a little back if you like here. Keep lengthening through the upper body. So crown of the head is dropping, spine is nice and long. And then inhale, open the chest halfway up, slide the hands back to the hips coming all the way up to standing and then turning the feet back forward and stepping to the front of the mat. Great. So from here, we're gonna come to sit down. So you can just find your way to a seated position. Why not? Let's do it through a sun salutation. So inhale, reaching the arms up and over the head. Exhale, slowly folding forward from the hips. Inhale, lengthen chest halfway up. Exhale, step or jump back. Lower on your exhale all the way down to the belly. Inhale to come up to your cobra. And exhaling from here, moving through hands and knees. And then you can just come to cross the legs, sit down and reach the legs back out in front of you. So we're coming to our classic uh, seated forward bend here, Paschimottanasana. And I'd like to cover the pose in two different ways because I think there's different benefits uh, you can get from both versions. So the first version is going to be with the legs straight. So imagining as if you're standing on the legs, feet off flex, toes pointing up. And then you can bring again your hands to the hips and lengthen upwards. You might even want to reach the arms over the head to help create that space. Now, similar shape um, to that standing forward bend, but here it's a little bit more challenging because the hips are glued to the ground. So there's less space for the hips uh, to move. So we'll on that inhale lengthen. Exhale, you're finding first that length uh, from the front of the hip flexors. So you're leaning as far forward as you can whilst keeping that spine long. And then exhale, lower the hands down. They don't need to touch the feet. Frame somewhere the legs. And now on that next exhale, you can start to allow the spine to round a little as you drop the head. So the first part is this active lengthening. And the second part is more the rounding and uh, relaxing part. Now, you might feel that your head is far away from the legs and you're not in a forward bend because the hamstrings might feel so tight that you might be somewhere like this. And this is absolutely fine. As long as you're still feeling a gentle stretch in the hamstrings, um, you're working in the pose. Okay. 
Keep activating through the legs, pressing the balls of the feet away. Staying one more breath and then slowly from here coming back up. So I'd like to show another version of the same pose. And this is focusing a bit more on bending the knees and allowing the belly to rest on the thigh. So it has um, other benefits as well. So um, legs can be bent. There can be space between the legs so that the belly can just rest on the legs. Hands come to the outsides of the feet here. So you can just bend the knees as much as you need uh, to hold the outside of the feet. And then you can slowly start to extend the feet, a little working on sort of lengthening through the legs and dropping the head down. And you can just pause again when you find that stretch in the back of the legs. So if you can still keep the feet active, so as you're holding here the feet, feet are flex, pressing into the hands. And then inhale, slowly coming back up. And exhale, just shaking the legs again. So I promise to do each pose three times. I think because we're doing two versions, we'll do both of the versions uh, twice now. So we'll come back to that first version again. This um, first version has many benefits because you're working on lengthening through the whole leg. So it kind of is really great to alternate which one you practice. Ground through your hips. And on your inhale, lengthen up through the arms, extending forward as far as you can whilst keeping that length through the spine. So you're finding, again, that length from the hip flexor. Exhale, lower the hands down, and then you start to round a little and drop the head down. This time we'll just pause, a few slow, steady breaths. If you can keep the belly firm here, it's kind of tempting to relax and let go of the belly, but you want to still maintain that length uh, through the front of the body. And then inhale, slowly coming up and exhale, release. And now let's repeat the other version. So you can bend the knees, bringing the knees hip distance apart. We start to find again that fold from the hips, but this time belly wants to rest on the thighs and you want to have the legs bent enough that you can hold the outside of the feet. Gradually then we start to work on keeping the feet active, extending the legs away and slowly dropping down into the pose. And here you can just keep that bend as much as you need in the knees here. Stay here, two more breaths. And then inhale, slowly, slowly coming up. And exhale, just shake the legs. So we're gonna do one last pose, um, Janishishasana. It's a uneven forward bend. So we stretch over one leg whilst the other leg is bent. So you can begin by bending your right leg Bring the sole of the right foot to the inside of the left thigh and the knee starts to open out to the side. Now, if the hip feels a little tighter, foot can be a little closer to the left knee and the knee might be more up than down. That's absolutely fine. Just don't press too much in the, in the knee joint. So just allow the knee to be where it wants to be. Now, left foot is flexed as if we're standing on that left foot. Like we did for the um, forward bend with both legs in front, Paschimottanasana. For this one, we're also going to first lengthen up through both arms. So we start to reach really high on that inhale. Exhale, extend as far forward as you can. Frame this time the left leg with both hands. So we're twisting a little towards that left leg. And then you can just tuck the chin down to your chest and pause here. And again, it doesn't really matter 
so much if the hands are very close to the hips or if they're closer to the foot. The important thing is to find a relatively comfortable stretch. There will be some discomfort and tightness in the leg, um, but you don't want to feel this uh, sort of sharp uh, pain. That's when your body's sort of saying, I need to be a little more out of the pose. Yeah. Use your next exhale to slowly release. Now we're going to come into the pose um, in the way with the bent leg. So similar to the other side. So the leg can be bent. You can be dropping the belly down onto the thighs, holding both sides of the feet with your hands. And then you're slowly activating through that left leg, pressing the left away and dropping the belly down to the thigh. Head can be dropping here. You can allow your belly to draw in and there is this twist additionally happening in this pose. So instead of having your belly in between the legs, you wanna twist your belly a little to your left leg. Slowly exhale, release. We'll change sides and then we'll come back um, to do each side uh, another time. So right leg can be extended. You can bend the left leg. Sole of the left foot comes against the right leg. Just adjust your hips if you need. You want both hips uh, nice and heavy. Inhale first, reach up through the arms and press into your right foot as if you want to stand on that right foot and then start to extend and lengthen forward. Slowly on the exhale, release. So hands can be framing somewhere that right leg. Again, finding that comfortable place. It might be different on this side uh, to the other side. And then take a couple of slow and steady breaths wherever you are. Seeing if you can keep lengthening through the spine with every inhale. And on the exhale, maybe folding a little deeper and relaxing into the pose. Staying here, one more breath. Use the next inhale to slowly come out. Exhale, bending your right knee. And now we come to the opposite uh, version. So you're holding both sides of the feet and then you're slowly sliding, sliding right foot forward. And as best as you can, the belly wants to stay on the thigh. So if you straighten the leg completely, you're kind of, and maybe the back starts to round a little, you've kind of lost the intention of the pose. So find that place, be honest with where you are, um, rather than trying to just stretch the leg out. Staying one more breath. And then slowly exhale, release. And then we come back um, two more times on each side. So left leg can be extended. You can bend the right leg. Should have said if that right knee is hovering and it feels uncomfortable, you could just place some sort of cushion under the knee. Um, not essential, but just if you have pain there. Use the inhale to lengthen through the spine, reach the arms up. Exhale, start to extend, extend, extend. And then from here, pause in the pose, keeping that length through the leg and as much as you can also through the upper body. Relax the shoulders, relaxing your face. And then slowly on the exhale, release and then we come to the bent leg position so bend the left leg belly can rest on the thighs hands sliding to the outsides of the feet and then slowly start to press the foot away right and this time belly again is resting on the thighs and you're still working on that twist towards the left leg Bringing focus to your breathing. And then slowly on the exhale, release and changing side. So right leg is extended, bend that left knee, sole of the foot comes in. 
can adjust the hips if you need. I always seem to <laughs> need to adjust my hips. Okay, inhale, reaching up through the arms. Exhale, start to extend, extend forward, place the hands down, frame the leg, pausing where you are in the pose, keeping that right leg extended and active. So that is the focus. Where the hands are, not so important. Staying here, one more breath. And then slowly on the exhale, start to release. And then we'll come with the bent leg position. So you can bend the right leg generously so that you can again hold both sides of the feet. This is the last time we're coming into the pose. So make it count. Slowly extending forward. Keeping that right foot active, keeping the belly as best as you can glued to the thigh. And maybe also exploring a little that twist uh, to the right leg. We'll stay here, two more breaths. And then slowly on the exhale, release, rolling all the way up. And then you can extend the other leg. And from here, you can come to a well-earned Shavasana. So come to lie all the way down on the back. Spin the palms open and let the feet fall out to the side. So closing the eyes, letting the whole body be nice and heavy. Feeling free to stay here, relaxing in Shavasana as long as you like. If you're feeling ready to come out, just wiggling fingers and toes. Arms can come overhead as you give the body a nice deep stretch. And then slowly bending the knees, rolling onto one side and coming up towards your seated position. So if you enjoyed the practice, do give the video a thumbs up. Um, let me know in the comments also how you got on. I just like to recap uh, three important tips when uh, practicing forward bending. So the first one is about bending the knees. Really feel free to bend the knees as much as you need. You wanna feel a stretch in the back of the hamstring, but you don't want it to be too much either during practice or the next day. So look after your body and um, use this option of bending the knees throughout any forward bend. Uh, the second tip is about uh, repeating the poses a few times and coming in and out fluidly at least the first few times. So we did that also through this practice and you might have noticed as we came to maybe the second or the third time approaching the pose, it felt more comfortable, the body was more open, you knew what uh, muscles you also needed to engage and uh, that can be really helpful also to, to notice progress over time um, as well as to improve of course your flexibility. And the, the third tip is just about also something we were practicing today about first folding halfway exploring that and then allowing for that deeper fold so really understanding the mechanics of what part of the hip have to move and um, also understanding that you can really get a lot of benefits without going to your maximum so moving gently and fluidly through um, can definitely be helpful as well as feeling nice for the body. So thanks for joining. Um, if you want to see more videos about yoga, meditation and breathing, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.